couple of months ago I showed you that I had purchased this uh, mass dam winch and a uh, 200 foot piece of rigging line to go with it to help me get trees down and um, I had one that had to come down it's a EA it's a ash tree that um, actually has been attacked by the emerald ash borer and um, it's pretty dangerous now so um, it's kind of leaning the wrong way uh, as you can see there it's leaning to the left to the woods here and it's also kind of leaning uphill so um, if I just went to cut it down it would be a problem would probably wind up in the woods and um, do damage to other things but here you can see some of the signs of that emerald ash borer you see like sprouts coming out of the side of the tree there um, and you can see the woodpeckers have actually been working on this too to um, get get at some of them and then um, slowly but surely a hole has opened up here where the ants have gotten in as it died and you can see these little d-shaped holes here all over the tree and that's really a true sign of the you know the ash borer there and um, you know the tree is basically uh, just it's full of these holes you can see where they've emerged from so um you know it's time for it to come down it's kind of dangerous and i thought at the same time i'd kind of show you how um this new rope endless rope winch actually works uh, and there you can see it's really leaning over to the left and uphill and i i wanted to go the other way the the place where i have a clear path for it to not do any damage is um you know exactly opposite the way it's leaning so um i'm gonna put this rope winch on it and try to put it where I want it now I did pick up a plastic container for the rope and the winch you know be putting other stuff in there for in a while but Costco had some good deals on these containers so I I grabbed one of them and you can see I did um it came with a 25 foot rope but I did buy a 200 foot piece of uh Samson rigging line it's a pretty simple unit. It looks kind of like one of those come along things, except for it uses a rope instead of cable. And um, this actually is my first time using it, so um, you know I'm learning here at the same time. Now I did take a piece of uh, 50 foot small nylon rope, and I'm using that just to try to get this rope around the tree just about as high as I can get it so there's a, a small branch sticking out about 25 feet up there and I figured I'd you know try to try to get it up there someday I'll probably get one of those slingshot things to be able to get it up higher but for now I think it'll be good um you know and this is just kind of a small tree it did take me a couple tries to to learn how to throw a rope up over a tree um but I finally did you know, I finally did get it and um, just got it hooked around that, that limb on the other side. And, um, you know, I was able to shake it and get that little rope down. And then I um, took the, the um, you know, the piece of the half inch pulling rope and just used that little rope to pull it up over the tree before I actually wrapped it around. It pulled it up over the branch here before I actually pulled it and wrapped it around the tree. And this tree's uh, maybe about 16 inches around there at the base and maybe about 75 feet tall. So, um, you know, I think this, this winch is a good capacity for um, the size of tree that it is. I wouldn't want to go much larger on it. Um, so, you know, there it is. I, I just kind of tied a loop on the end and pulled it up and got that wrapped around the tree now. And... Um, you can see where I've got 200 feet of line here and it's actually quite a bit extra that caused a lot of problems trying to feed it through the winch and stuff but um I'm trying to figure out exactly how long I want to cut it at and I think I'm got, probably going to come up with a 125 foot piece and a 75 foot piece then about 100 foot away I had this uh, other maple that's in good shape so I just decided to, I don't have a tree saver strap yet so I just decided to wrap a chain around it that I knew would um hold the pull and this is you know well out of the range of the top of the tree so um just hook the winch on there and then you pull the end of the cable through and go around and actually you have to pull it back to that other bracket on the bottom when you're done but um it's really easy and it's great that you don't have to worry about how long the rope is you can just um you know make, use any length rope you want with this so it was, it was fairly easy. It would have been easier if I didn't have an extra, you know, 75 or 80 feet of rope there. And I got that kind of 
pulled through and wrapped around and now it's time to start taking up some of the slack on it. So it's really easy to crank. I mean it's like your standard standard um, power pull thing and it, it, it did a, a good job at tensioning it up and um, you can see it was starting to put a little bit of pressure on the tree and uh, then I just kind of went back and I just kept cranking on it to try to take any um, it's new rope so I figured there might be some stretch in it and there was so you know I did I did crank it a little bit more until I got rid of any of the stretch in the rope also and this way I also had some uh, pressure on the tree pulling it the way I wanted it to go um, and I'm just hoping that it does you know fall the way I want it now because um, any other way would be a pain or it would do damage to other trees so now it's time to get the chainsaw out and start doing a little bit of cutting and um, the way this tree is rotted in the middle and um, you know it's pretty much damaged there I just decided to just take a uh, just a very shallow notch out of it just um, just enough so I'd have a cane pointing it exactly where I wanted to go um, I didn't want to go too deep and break into that hollow section in the middle because that would have been disastrous. You never know which way they're going to go when that happens. So, um, probably should have sharpened the chain a little bit before I did this. I hadn't uh, sharpened it in a while, so um, it did take a little while to cut that notch out. And you see I didn't cut all the way into the rotten section there. And what I'm going to do is just take a back cut on the back side, but I'm not going to go anywhere near far enough to um, to make it fall. I'm, I'm just going to I'm going to leave like about four inch in there. You can see four and a half inch in. And uh, if you don't have any experience with chains, so I, you know, I wouldn't be doing something like this either. So. And I just, just got it cut and you can see I left a really wide hinge here um, and I made sure that the cuts were perfectly um, parallel to the direction that I wanted it to go in and then I just ran down and started to put some more pressure on it with the um, the winch there a couple cranks and you can um, actually you can kind of watch it in that little that little section there the tree now is starting to, to lean downhill exactly opposite the way it wanted to fall and the winch seems to be doing a really good job at pulling it and um, you know by getting that hinge out in front of that rotten spot it, uh, it looks like it's gonna be um, you know it's gonna fall exactly where I want it there you can see it um, you know it's not the fastest thing in the world it's uh, kinda like the slow but sure and it does get the job done and I was really, um, I'm really super happy with it because I'll have a lot of spots in the woods where I can't get my tractor and hook a rope on. And, uh, you know, I could have pulled this with my tractor uh, very easily, but I just wanted to get some practice with this winch and just kind of show you how it works out in the open where I can get a good video of it. So there you can see the tree is, um, you know, it's really starting to lean the way I want it to go and uh, everything's looking good now. Now it's supposed to be able to put three quarters of a ton of pressure worth of force on the rope. Um, I, you know, there's no way to measure it, and I don't know exactly what it is or anything, but it does seem to be uh, doing a pretty good pull. And there you can see that uh, the hinge is basically closed down now, and the tree's, uh, you know, leaning exactly where I want it. So now it's just a matter of uh, using the winch to just, uh, you know, break that joint. It's always good to get practice with something like this out in the open where you really can't damage anything either um, because it can you know can do a lot of damage if it falls in the wrong place and doesn't work right and there you see it exactly where I wanted it to fall it uh, did no damage to any of the surrounding trees took a couple little leaves off the maple and stuff like that but um it was a uh, successful pull and uh, there you can see how crazy uh, cockeyed that tree was um, so in the end uh, I'm really happy with the way this little winch works and it did do a good job and there you can see all the rot where you, uh, you really have to be careful when you take a tree down that's got a rotten center because you know if you cut too deep or anything else it just can go anywhere at once um, 
so you really have to be careful and this winch really did do a good job um, at letting me you know pull from a hundred feet away and then it was an easy job of just um, you know I looked online for some knots before I started this a knot that could be undone after being put under force so um, you could easily untie it after you did something like this and you, know, you can pretty much see uh, how easy it is to undo and I really have to learn a lot more knots now it looks like to go along with this but did a good job and uh, just takes a couple of minutes to wrap the rope back up put it away and um, you know I, I say that I really do think it was a um, you know well spent money on this item looks like it's gonna work good for me and the one thing that you want to make sure that you do if you you know you buy something like this to use is to get the right type of rope um, this was a Samson Pro rigging rope that uh, is made for rigging and it doesn't have a lot of stretch in it so that you know that's why it really works so good I think I got that packed away and time to get out the chainsaws I'm starting with my little uh, Echo CS310 I like to use that for all the little limbing and stuff. It's just really super lightweight, um, easy to handle, and um, you know, low vibration and everything else. And it it does a good job for the, all the little stuff. You don't want to cut. You don't want to go. You know, cut cut anything over like six eight inches with it because it's just too slow. But um, for all this little little limbing and stuff like that, it really is a wonderful saw that um, always starts easy and. Uh, you know it just always runs good no matter how long it sits between uh, you know it just sits unused I'm just gonna start cutting this up into some firewood sections um, you know, I've been using I've, I've got so many of these uh, EAB killed ash trees that I've been using for firewood so um, it does burn good and it burns fairly hot and, um, it's it's really half dry because of the you know all the damage done to it so then for the bigger stuff I actually get out that uh, Timberwolf CS 590 and um, that's another really really good saw that I really do like um, it's easy to start and uh, well it's a little bit the chain actually a little bit dull now because I was cutting into the dirt the last time I used it but um, you know, if I file the chain a little bit, it's a um, really powerful, strong, fast-cutting saw for the, um, you know, a couple dollars that it costs. So now it's, you know, time to just start cutting this up into firewood-sized chunks. And this is basically up on the good section of it. Um, in a couple minutes, we'll get down into the, the rotten section on the bottom. And there you can see there's some more of those uh, D-shaped holes. They're all over the tree. Um, you know, there's just a ton of them everywhere. If you look, you can see, you know, it's definitely emerald ash. And I'm going to take a hatchet and try, see if I can get this bark off here and um, kind of show you the damage that they do underneath there um, that actually kills the tree. And there you can see it. The, uh, the larvae actually uh, just eat their way through that layer under the bark there and they you know they pretty much uh, go unnoticed until the tree just uh, dies and it's just amazing how you know such a tiny insect and there you can see there's one larva that actually uh, dried up and died in the tree it never made it out but you know it's just amazing how such a uh, tiny insect can kill these mighty ash trees Here's a, another piece that I, you know, kind of scrape some more bark off of. And, and it's time to, to start getting into this bottom piece. And um, this is a spot that was rotted about probably close to, you know, five and a half, six feet up. And as I started cutting into it, um, kind of hard to see here, but you'll notice that there's ants starting to come out. Um, and it definitely was a carpenter ant nest in there. Um, and the more I cut, the more ants that you'll actually start seeing uh, running around there. 
So, uh, you know, this is one of the reasons why you really should uh, deal with any kind of a tree that dies because um, once they start getting hollowed out like this, they really do get dangerous. Uh, I don't know, you can't, I don't know if you can really see it, but we're starting to get a lot of ants out there. And there's a pocket there that's uh, probably about four inches diameter, a little bit bigger. And it's actually totally full of um, little larvae and egg sacs and if you look carefully you can see the ants actually running away with um like the little larvae and stuff like that they grab one and then they go running away with it i don't know where they think they're going but um you know you smash it so you can get a little better idea those are all the um i guess the baby ant larvae and you see them uh you know just scurrying and stuff like that and i just sort of stood here trying to get some videos of it and stuff like that and then I realized that they actually um the darn things were all up inside my coveralls now and stuff so um I had to take a break and just uh walk kind of walk away from this for a couple minutes to um to clean myself out because it's kind of a strange feeling when you got things crawling up your leg so there you can see it um you know that was definitely a big old carpenter ant nest yeah, so I'm just gonna go back over and peel another piece of bark on another log here and you know you can see there pretty much the whole tree is like this um, top to bottom if you look at it uh, I don't know you know how many of you have ever seen the kind of damage that they do but you know that's why I thought I'd share this video it's kind of gross a little bit but um, you know, it gives you an idea of the damage that these little uh, guys do to the tree. And it's really not noticeable until the tree is basically dead. So anyhow, um, I'm going to say that this winch actually, I think it was a really great buy. And it's going to be handy. And um, and I'm just hoping someday that these uh, they find some way to stop these little emerald ash borers before, before all the ash trees are gone in America. I'd say about 75% of the trees that I had in my uh, yard were all ash trees. And, um, you know, as you can see, this is why they're all coming down and being turned into basically lumber and firewood. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.